The effects of climate change can be seen all around us, but to help us visualize that better, an organization called Climate Central has put together an animation that lets us look at sea level rise around the world and close to home. It's to really help people to see what the, what the stakes are uh, for people all over the world with the choices that we're facing. So Andrew Pershing is the director of climate science at Climate Central, an organization that conducts scientific research on climate change. So we modeled one and a half degrees of warming uh, and compared that with three degrees of warming and specifically through the lens of sea level rise. This model shows the Hotel Del Coronado at current sea levels. Then by sliding a bar, you can look into the future and temperature change. 1.5 degrees Celsius equals 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit, and 3 degrees Celsius equals 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we go to that one and a half degree target, we're actually going to continue to experience sea level rise even beyond that this mid-century period where, uh, where temperature will hopefully level off. Which would dramatically affect coastlines. One and a half degrees of warming uh, leads to about 10 feet in total of sea level rise, which is a radical transformation of the coastlines around the world. And on our current path, the scenario is much worse. And three degrees of warming leads to 20 feet of sea level rise, which is, which is catastrophic in many places around the world. This map shows what San Diego's coastline would look like based off of a one to four degree rise in temperature, and it's devastating. The story is the same around the world, so choices have to be made. It's a tough, tough uh, uh, road for us to get to. It certainly seems like it's possible. That will take a lot of hard work. If we don't bend that curve, if we don't reduce CO2 emissions, then we're looking at higher rates of warming and we're looking at higher temperatures later in the century, as much as three degrees uh, on average around the world. Pershing thinks the US and other developed nations can cut emissions by 2030. So the question is, how are we gonna help the developing world that doesn't have those resources how are we going to relate to nations like China and Russia that haven't, uh, haven't put serious commitments on the table yet? He believes that looking at the rate of change gives us a better understanding. And so we're taking basically 10,000 years of change and we're going to pack it into a century. And so that's a huge rate that we are going to have to adjust to. But that outcome can be changed. This has been a transformative year, I think, for how many people think about climate change and think about themselves, like that this is something that we're experiencing now. So I'm optimistic that people are getting that message. And that path is not as hard as it sounds. It doesn't require technology that we haven't invented. Solar panels and wind turbines, like let's do it. And we can do it. It's just a question of getting it out at scale fast enough. Pershing believes in the idea that there is still time to make the right choices. It's just that the time to make those choices is running out. Sean Stiles, News 8.